I'm George Lienemann and welcome to Friday's 5 at 5. Residents were startled at around 10pm on Sunday night by a loud explosion coming from the vicinity of Adcock Park in Gosford, with reports of homes being shaken throughout the city area. In a short statement, police confirmed that the specialist officers from the Rescue and Bomb Disposal Unit conducted a controlled detonation of an explosive substance as part of a police operation in West Gosford. No further details have been released at this time. At around the same time on the previous week, there was a similar explosion in the Wyong area, with reports of this event flooding social media. We spoke to Sally, a local resident, about the incident. Out of nowhere, it must have been close to 11 o'clock, oh, probably quarter to, just out of a, a, a huge roar, explosion. It shook our house. Um, I, I My initial thought was that, you know, there was, I don't know, something had it was an explosion of some sort. Uh, I got up and asked Aidan if he'd heard it and he looked stony faced and like, whoa, what, it, what on earth was that? I actually came out and locked all the doors. I wasn't sure what was going on. I wrote to my neighbour and said, did you hear that? And she, she said, yes, she did. And they, their thought was that maybe a kitchen or something up at the club had blown up, you know. It was without a doubt an explosion. It wasn't a car backfiring, it, it wasn't a gunshot, it was an explosion. Greens representative and Central Coast resident Abigail Boyd has begun a public campaign to support her upcoming motion in the New South Wales Upper House, seeking to stop mining in the Central Coast water catchment area. The Central Coast Drinking Water Catchment Protection Bill comes as locals are preparing for another major public protest on the 26th of October. Residents will march against the development of the Wallara 2 coal mine in the Gillaby and Wyong River catchment area, which supplies drinking water to over 300,000 people People on the central coast. So this bill, it seeks to protect the water catchment, but in a way um, similar to the protection you see for the Illawarra and Sydney catchment areas. So Water New South Wales is the, the water authority that um, has special responsibility for looking after the Sydney and Illawarra water catchment areas. Um, there's nothing like that for the coast. So there's a possibility that we could get Water New South Wales to pay some attention to the coast, um, but that requires a government action. So this bill is designed to, to try and up the level of protection on the coast. We need labour on side. I, you know, I've managed to get the, um, all of the actions that I've been successful with in relation to the ash dam um, and the inquiries, all the call for papers. That was with the support of occasionally both One Nation and the Shooters of Fishers and Farmers, um, but the Shooters of Fishers and Farmers have been quite um, open to discussions around water. So I'm hoping that we can get them on board. So they're the ones to lobby, I think. MP for Terrigal Adam Crouch has announced a review into the regulation of Warnervale Airport to provide greater certainty to airport users. The Central Coast Aero Club was advised by the council in July that aircraft movements at Warnervale may be restricted due to triggering the Warnervale Airport Restriction or WAR Act. The council has since refused to renegotiate the Aero Club's current lease and attempted to revegetate re areas in the vicinity of the runway. The review will look into the impact of the WAR Act and assess how the airport should be regulated. Mr Crouch said the needs of the Aero Club would be considered at the highest levels within the New South Wales government and that it would not take any compliance action while the review is underway. We spoke to CEO of the Aero Club, Andrew Smith. Absolutely brilliant. I think um, it was a sort of a review that had to happen. Um, state government have seen the uh, community sort of outrage, if you like, about uh, which way the, everything was heading with the airport here. Uh, and the discontent in the community and, and uh, have reacted to that. So they're looking to review the Warnervale Airport Restrictions Act as well as the airport more generally, I believe. Um, and that's um, absolutely brilliant for us because it gives us a little bit of more certainty. Uh, Boeing are forecasting 800,000 uh, pilot positions needed over the next 20 years, over and above the current take-up rate. So um, there's, a, there's a huge shortfall uh, forecast. Uh, we've been training pilots on the coast here for 47 years. Uh, we do it very well and uh, we've got 340,000 people on the central coast here that we look after uh, and, uh, and we can play a big role in, in providing the pilots for the uh, Australian aviation industry going forward. Local councillors from all over New South Wales converged on Warwick Farm this week for the New South Wales Local Government's annual conference. The aim of the conference is for councillors to share ideas, meet with state politicians and potentially agree on new policies. 
The Central Coast was well represented at this year's conference with Deputy Mayor Jane Smith successfully moving two motions. One to call on the federal government to consult over the rollout of 5G infrastructure and the other to improve the integrity in consultant reports in DA processes. Central Coast spoke with Councillor Jeff Sundstrom yesterday. With the rollout of the 5G network, uh, there are some community concerns. We want to make sure that the government addresses those concerns and we want to have councils having you know, decent input into where those facilities are located. I guess a theme of some of the um, motions that the Central Coast Council brought about were about um, separation and making sure that there's uh, less of a connection between people obtaining um, reports and certifications and those uh, certifiers and report providers. So it's going to give, uh, if, it, if we go through and ahead with these plans, it'll make uh, more certainty for people that are getting work done and more certainty for the community that there is a separation. Central Coast commuters may soon enjoy greater connectivity on the train trip to Sydney with the completion of the first of 22 new mobile base stations at Lizaro and Narara stations. The tower is the first stage of upgrades to mobile coverage that aims to eliminate black spots along the 68 kilometre rail corridor between Wyong and Hornsby. It's part of a $29 million investment by the Federal Government, State Government and Telstra. Robertson MP Lucy Wicks said around one in four people living on the coast commutes to Sydney by train every weekday and that sitting idly on a train was not productive for the commuters who need to stay connected to work and family. The old Kibbleplex building in the heart of Gosford will be transformed into a $345 million residential and retail complex within 10 years if the Lederer Group is successful with its latest DA lodged with the State Planning Department. The master plan, which includes five 20 to 30 storey residential towers with more than 700 apartments and over 1,000 parking spaces, is on exhibition until November 7th. The plan is a slimmer version of the Lederer's earlier DA, which was withdrawn in March 2018. According to the proponents, Great care has been taken with the design to prevent overshadowing of Kibble Park. And in sport, Springfield's Luke King has returned from the Bathurst 1000 Toyota 86 series with three podium finishes under his belt. King secured a second, a first and a third place in the series three days of racing, which saw races from across the country descend on Mount Panorama for a shot at glory. His win in race number one was not without some heart-stopping moments. Vanner again from downtown and on the outside, oh, big one! Peter Vodanovic up and over in a big way. And the Kiwi takes a wild ride through the chase. He missed that one badly. And at the chequered flag, it's Luke King winning a dramatic and exciting race in the Toyota 86 Racing Series. The Coast is eagerly awaiting another S3 Derby clash with Newcastle Jets this Saturday at Central Coast Stadium. The Mariners have shown some impressive performances in the last few weeks with VAR decisions going against them. So the team is fired up to play for the badge this weekend and take home a first victory. Join in. Murray slides it to Juric for the strike. Oh, what a stunning opening goal from the Central Coast Mariners. It's a cracker. Milan Juric, the attacking midfielder out of... They you know, really felt like we were dominating the match that was there for, for, for big periods of the time. So there's a lot of confidence that comes out of that. And, and even on the weekend against Western Sydney Wanderers, there was a, there's a lot of confidence that comes from the way that we're playing, the way that the boys are able to dominate games at key, key moments. And it's now just converting that and, uh, and turning that into some real momentum and positivity around the club. Your first home game uh, of the season at the Central Coast Stadium this Saturday night. Um, there's a bit of a buzz around uh, the Central Coast about that match, local uh, derby with, with Newcastle. What can fans expect? Yeah, they can expect the uh, F3 derby to be back to its, uh, its fullest glory. We've been waiting for some time to have an F3 derby on a Saturday night. Um, so, so it's going to bring the city to life, which is great. And also there's there's uh, reciprocal membership. So if you become a Central Coast Mariners member, then you'll be able to get the F3 derby up in Newcastle and the opposite for them as well so we're expecting a good 3,000 Newcastle Jets fans to come down um, and really create quite a quite a great great match that's there and it's such an important one it's, it's possibly the most important uh, game for our season uh, straight off the bats. This week artist and author Nina Angelo launched her first book Don't Cry Dance to a packed crowd at King Cumber Library. It's an incredible story of evil, war, love and forgiveness and we caught up with Nina for a quick chat. It's a memoir of war love and forgiveness but it's about my mum and dad my polish young mother who was sort of 11 12 years old when the war broke out and my dad who was 16 years older a greek man how they met their journeys 
how my mum was on the run and my dad, how they met in Auschwitz. For the first time he made a pass at her, she knocked him back and their journey from Auschwitz through the forests, through out with the Red Cross after the end of the war to Paris where they met and again and fell in love. And then I was born. So the book is my story too. So it's about the first generation of Holocaust survivors, which is really important and for my children and for their children mm -hmm. and continue from there. It's really important that we don't have any other stories, mm. none. That's all for this week and if you're stuck for something to do this weekend, don't forget the Mangrove Mountain Country Fair. The day begins at 9am on Waratah Road with the now famous Mountain Mayhem Billy Cart Derby and will include a petting zoo, pony rides, arts and crafts and the very entertaining Great Chicken Run. Thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for Fridays 5 at 5. Thank you.